intermolecular forces and phases of matter. All right, so before we really start discussing intermolecular forces, let's just remind ourselves of, of a few things regarding phases. And the first phase that we're going to talk about is gases. And remember that we have a low density of molecules in a given volume, so the molecules are really far apart and have total freedom of motion. They also expand to fill the container and they take its shape. This also means that these gas molecules are very far apart from each other and they can't feel each other's presence. And this is where we're going. Intermolecular forces involves molecules feeling each other's presence. All right, now in liquids, molecules are close together, but they still have freedom of motion, so they can exchange neighbors very easily. They do take the shape of the container, but they don't expand to fill the volumes. All right, so then there's solids. Now, solids don't take the shape of the container or expand to fill its volume, and our everyday experience tells us that. Now, in a solid, molecules are very closely packed together and held in position by strong attractions. And so they're in an ordered array, and we call that ordered array a crystal lattice. Ionic compounds form these crystal lattices. Now, our big question that we are going to answer throughout this unit is, why is a particular substance, a gas, liquid, or a solid at some temperature? What, cha what changes? I mean, how does that happen? And even though it's our everyday experience, we see things as gases, liquids, or solids, we really haven't thought about why it might be that phase at room temperature, for instance. All right, so basically, if we dig down, then we find out that the physical state of matter depends on this balance between kinetic energies of particles, so basically how fast they're moving, so energy of movement, and then on the other hand, the strength of their inner particle attractions. And so basically, whether they're attracted to each other strongly or weakly, and this is a form of potential energy. Basically, we can describe the strength of attraction using Coulomb's law. And so here's V. This is the inner particle potential. And it's related, so this is a proportional sign, it's related to the charges on the particles and the distance between them. And this negative sign here indicates that it's an attraction as opposed to a repulsion. So opposite charges attract. So basically, we have a negative potential, which is an attractive potential. Okay, so now another thing that we are familiar with in everyday life, even though we haven't thought a lot about it, most likely, is that the phase can go from a gas to a liquid to a solid if we decrease the temperature. Now, again, that's an everyday experience. That's something that we've, that we've seen, that we've observed. All right, and then the other way that we can do that is increase the external pressure on that gas, and that will also cause phase changes. Now, why is this? And so what we have been creeping up on throughout this presentation is the idea of intermolecular forces. So as I said, these are attractions. These are attractions between separate particles in a substance. So not intramolecular, which that would be bonding inside some substance. So bonding, like for instance, a molecule like water would be covalently bonded between oxygen and hydrogen in the molecule. This, on the other hand, is the attraction between two separate water molecules to each other. Okay? Now, if we decrease the temperature, then we decrease the kinetic energy of the particles. All right, so temperature is related to kinetic energy of the particles. And if we increase the pressure, then we squeeze them closer together and they begin to feel each other's presence. And so that's also, that's potential energy. So we squeeze them together, they can feel each other and be attracted to each other. Okay, so intermolecular forces actually affect the physical properties of a substance. So you've heard of these things like boiling point, melting point, vapor pressure. And it turns out that if the 
intermolecular attractions in a substance are strong, then that's going to lead to a higher boiling point, a higher melting point, and a lower vapor pressure. Okay, so here is a ranking of the types of intermolecular forces and their relative strengths. Now up here would actually be ion-ion interactions. So you could think of those for ionic compounds. So th this would be the ionic lattice that we talked about in the previous unit. But as far as what we're going to discuss in this unit, talk about ion dipole, although we'll talk about that a little bit more in unit 13, and then hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole. Now hydrogen bonding is a special case of dipole-dipole. We'll also talk about dipole-induced dipole, so that's going to be an interaction between a molecule that has a permanent dipole, i.e. is a polar molecule, and a molecule that does not have a permanent molecular dipole. And then we'll also talk about dispersion forces, which are called London forces. They're also called Van der Waals forces, so those are all the same type of thing. All right, so next up we'll discuss each one of those intermolecular forces.